I suppose I could have built our garden armchair out of teak or mahogany or even white cedar, but we've had good luck with cypress. It's a good outdoor wood. The insects don't seem to like it, and it's pretty stable. Plus, it makes the piece a bit lighter. Now, I acquired the cypress for our project from our supplier down in Florida. They reclaim logs that went to the bottom of rivers on their way to the sawmill. Once they bring them up, they cut them into timber, dry them, and you have really beautiful wood. Now, I bought the stock, what they call, in the rough, and I have to do some work to it before I can start using it. First of all, if you look at this piece, you can see there's a little bit of a curve, and it's a little bit twisted. To take that out, I have to run it through my jointer. If I ran it through the surface planer, it would just follow the curve. Once I have one side flat on the jointer, then I can run it through the surface planer. Now, if you don't have a jointer or a surface planer, have the mill prep the stock for you. Before we use any power tools, let's talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. What I want to do is set the timber on the joiner bed, use a couple pads, and just push it to through, taking off about a 32nd of an inch with each pass. Now I want to smooth up this other face. I don't want to do that on the joiner, because even though I'll end up with a flat surface, they won't be parallel to one another. That's why I turn to the surface planer. If I take the face that's been jointed, set it on the planer bed, as the stock goes through, the cutter head is going to remove material from this side, making it uniform in thickness and parallel. With the faces parallel and flat, the next thing I have to deal with is the edges. They're not straight either. So we're back to the joiner, making sure that the fence is 90 degrees to the bed. And if I put this piece up against it, you can see it's not square. I have to make sure I hold the stock tightly against the fence so that I'll get a nice square edge. Okay, that edge is nice and square to the fence. Now I want to make this edge parallel. So I place the jointed edge against the fence and run it through, a 32nd of an inch wider than what I want to end up with. Now it's back to the joiner to clean up that freshly cut edge. Now we have a piece of stock we can start working with. Well, let's look at the prototype. I'm going to start with this piece. It's really the key piece of the project. It receives the stretchers, it receives the seat supports, it receives the armrest, as well as the backrest assembly. I've taken the blank piece of stock and laid it out using this cardboard template as a master. I've laid out everything on here, including my mortises, which I'll use later. The first cut that I want to make on the piece is along the face of the backrest. Now you might think that this particular piece would be easier to run through the joiner in this direction. But there's a problem if I do that. If you look at the grain on this piece, if I start at this end, the joiner blade turns this way. It's going to be going against this grain. It'll want to tear it out. However, if I start at this end, it'll be going with the grain, and I'll get a much smoother cut. What 
I'm doing here is putting an indicator line or a guide line right on my table saw surface, and it's just behind where this blade will cut at this height. The reason for that is the next step is to cut out the back side of this dog leg. Now, because there's two different angles, I don't want to overcut in this center area. So what I did is I took a square and went plenty far back from the intersection, put a mark here, transferred it down the side, then came to the straight part of the leg, stayed away from the intersection, put a mark here, transferred it down the side. I want to stop at these marks when they reach the mark on the table. Now I make sure that the blade has stopped turning, then I can remove the piece, turn it over, and cut the lower section. Okay, now it's off to the bandsaw. Okay, and while I'm here at the bandsaw, I'll cut off the top. Well, the joiner won't handle the back side of these legs, but the belt sander will. I'm using a 150 grit belt, and I've clamped both pieces together, not only to get a perfect match, but it gives me a broader surface onto which to run the belt sander. The entire chair is held together by mortise and tenon joints, except for the seat slats. So here I've turned to my dedicated mortiser to make the mortises. I have a half inch chisel set up, and what I'm trying to do is get a 7 8 inch wide mortise. So I make one run from this side, then I turn it around and go from the other side. Now there are a couple issues to deal with. If you look at this piece and it sits on the table, it's not going to be flat when I'm cutting that mortise. So I've simply taken a scrap piece of stock, which I can slide underneath it and move it along as I drill it out. The next mortise that I want to make is for the armrest. Now the armrest is parallel to the seat support and the stretcher, but because the back is pitched, the mortise has to be angled. And it's actually the same angle. And this is where the scraps of wedge come in handy. It's going to allow me to place the stock in the right position to make the mortise. I hold the wedge so that it's at least even with the end of my table, set the piece in, and mortise it. The next set of mortises that I need are these. They will receive the backrest assembly. I don't need any shims. I don't need any bevels. Okay, that completes the upper mortise, but look what happens when I go to complete the lower one. Because of the angle, it pushes away from the fence. So I'm just going to spin the piece around, lower the bit, loosen up the fence, push the fence forward away from me until the chisel just hits the other side of the mortise I'm completed, lock it in place, and then I can finish the lower one. Let's take another look at the prototype. The front legs need one more mortise. It's a long, narrow, and shallow mortise that picks up the front rail and this bracket. With the mortises complete in the legs, I'm ready to start forming tenons on the stretchers, the seat supports, and any rails that connect the sides. This happens to be a stretcher. The first thing I did was install this stop block. Whenever I run narrow pieces through the saw with the miter gauge, I don't want them riding up against the fence for fear of kickback. What the stop block does is it positions me in the right position for the length of the tenon, but I'll be clear of the block before I actually hit the saw. 
I've set the saw height for a quarter of an inch, and that's to make the shoulder cut on what will be the vertical faces of each piece. Now I'm just going to lower the blade to an eighth of an inch and make the shoulder cut on the horizontal edges. Well, now for the cheek cuts. I could make those at the bandsaw, but we have a tenoning jig, which makes it a little bit faster. We'll just give it a test fit. It should just be snug, just a slip fit, like that. That should be good. Now, these are the pieces that I'm going to be using for the seat. And it has a little bit of a dip in it for comfort. With a quarter inch radius roundover bit, I'm easing any corners that might be exposed. Before I do any assembly, I'm going to sand all the surfaces. Well, now we're ready for some assembly. I'm going to put the ends together. I'm using a polyurethane glue. It's a waterproof glue. And I'm applying it to the inside of the mortises. The manufacturer says it only has to be applied to one surface. I'm going to put it inside the mortise. And then I'm going to also add just a little bit on the tenons. It doesn't take very much. Now, one thing I can tell you about this glue, once it's on you, it never comes off. So that's why I wear the rubber gloves, and those can just get thrown away. While the end assemblies sit in the clamps for a while, let's start working on the backrest assembly. There are two rails, and there are six slats. The slats are 3 eighths of an inch thick, and the edges are rounded over, and they fit in full-size mortises. Because the slat is rounded, the router is really the best tool to make the mortise with. So I have a 3 eighths inch bit in the router. I've set the rip fence the distance that I want, and I've clamped the two pieces together, so that gives me more stability for the router base. All the layout is done, just plunge out one at a time. Let me show you how I rounded the edges on those slats. I set up a 3 8 inch beading bit in the router, and that'll do an edge in one pass. I've also installed this feather board to keep the stock tight to the table. If it were to come up as I was passing it through, it would ruin the piece. All right, well, before I leave tonight, I think I'll round over the edges of the rails for the backrest and give them a sanding. Tomorrow, we'll put it together. Ah, good morning. We're getting a little bit of rain today. We could use it. It's been dry around here for a while. But the rain will never affect this chair. We know that this cypress is very weather resistant. But we do have to pay attention to structure when we build furniture. We want good, strong connections between the pieces. That's why I added these braces. I have a front rail with a very short tenon. There's going to be a lot of force wanting to work this leg loose. So by adding this brace, we'll get a lot of strength. It's very important to have the grain run along the diagonal to get the maximum strength. So what I've done is taken a piece of stock, planed it down to 7 eighths of inch thickness. I'm going to use my miter gauge and just cut a couple triangles. <laughs> Here I have a little cardboard template to trace the outline of the piece, and I'll cut it at the bandsaw. Well, 
With my dado set up in the saw with a sacrificial strip so that it won't hit the fence, I'm able to form a tenon which is going to fit into the mortise. While the dado is still in the saw, I've simply raised it to notch the end of the tenon. Quick pass with a quarter inch radius bit takes care of the edges. We've just made a mortise in the bottom edge of that front rail, and that's to receive the brace. Now I'm ready to assemble the backrest. Putting a little bit more of that polyurethane glue in all the mortises, spread it out with a brush, slip the parts together. Now I won't clamp just the backrest. We'll clamp the whole chair together in this next step. Okay, that takes care of all the clamping. While it's still in the clamps, I can continue the work by starting to install the seat slats. There's a little bit of work to do on the slats before they get installed. All the top edges are rounded over with a quarter inch radius, with the exception of this front piece, which is more of a bull nose made with a 3 8 inch radius bit. These slats get attached to the supports with some screws. Let's pre-drill some holes at the drill press. Where the slats meet the legs, because it's rounded over, there's a chance for debris or dirt to get trapped in there, trapping moisture. I would rather have a tight joint. So what I'm going to do is just take a little pair of dividers and scribe a line around the leg. And we'll cut it at the bandsaw. The slat meets the leg at a slight angle. Fortunately, my table on my bandsaw tips to about 10 degrees for this cut. No glue here, just some inch and 5 8 screws. Now here I'm using a plug cutter. It's a hollow drill with a very sharp tip on it that just removes the outside area, leaving in the center a bung that I can use to fill the counterboys for those screws. A little bit of glue in the hole with this adapter for my glue bottle. Set the plug in place. Tap it down, and then I have a little saw to trim it flush. And then I'll sand it smooth. The last pieces to make for our chair are the armrests. I laid out the shape with this cardboard template, and now I need to form this tenon. But the tenon has an angled side. The best way to make that cut will be at the table saw with my miter gauge. I've turned the miter gauge to 12 degrees, which is the angle I want, and I've set the height to nibble away the material on one side of the tenon. OK, that takes care of that side of the tenon on this armrest. For the other armrest, it's a mirror image, so I have to slide the miter gauge to 12 degrees on the other side of zero, and then nibble away the material. All right, to complete the other side of the tenon, I'm going to leave the miter gauge in the same position, go back to the first armrest, and raise the blade to the right height 
and follow the same procedure to complete the tenon. Here I'm just making a cut at the top of the tenon, down about three-eighths of an inch, and I'll remove the rest of the material at the bandsaw. That's the beginning of the mortise on the underside of the armrest into which the tenon from the front leg will sit. Okay, well that takes care of the woodworking. Now there's one more thing I want to do to these chairs in the finishing room. If there's anything I worry about with this cypress is how it weathers. We've built projects before and they tend to be uneven in color and water it stains the wood. So what I'm using here to protect it and even up the color is a product that actually started out being used for boats, but now they find that it's great for decks or play sets. Anything that's made of wood that sits outdoors. It's an oil alkyd resin that blocks the UV and keeps the water from penetrating the wood. They say that all you have to do is put on one coat, let it dry, that's all you have to do. Well, here it is, all dry, ready for many years of life outdoors without complaint. These are so popular around here, I'm going to have to build a few more. Mm -hmm.